Good day, Internet. My name is Evan. In the previous video, I showed you how to use Midjourney to design characters and compose a scene. In another video, I showed you how to create a comic script. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Midjourney to create illustrations for your comics. No drawing skills necessary, just your imagination. Note that you'll need a Midjourney subscription for this. If this is your first time using the tool, make sure to watch the other videos so you can follow along easily. The first thing you need is a character profile like this one. I created mine with the assistance of ChatGPT. Emphasis on the word assistance. Now, a character profile is a detailed outline or description of your character. But for the purpose of this video, we'll be focusing on the physical characteristics. Face, eyes, hair, age, body shape, body build, skin, clothing, and so much more. That includes unique features like horns or wings. One thing I recommend you to avoid is intricate details like tattoos or jewelry or anything that's hard to stay consistent. We want to make our lives easier in this process. If you don't have any character profiles or don't know how to create one, you may watch this video where I dive deep into the process and explain it in detail. Now it's time to illustrate my character. Let me begin by prompting the character reference. I'm not going to explain anymore how character reference works because I covered that in previous videos. Just making sure that I have the character profile details nailed down. Now we're going to add sref. So we're going to use the sref parameter to control the art style of the generation. Now there are three ways to do this. The first method is to use the style tuner. We've learned that in a previous video where you can generate hundreds of art style variations using a given prompt. Another way is to type random after the sref parameter. And as you can probably guess, the art style will also be random. This method generates a random code with a designated art style. But the thing is, you want control over the result. So rather than generating images by random, the best method is actually to use other art styles that have already been established. These codes are shared by many across the web. I have two resources to recommend though. You can check out the Thane YouTube channel, which showcases lots of different art styles you can sift through via video. Or you could use this website, Creator Impact. As you can see, there's tons of art styles you can copy. I will leave a link in the description for both resources. Now what we're going to do at this point is experiment with different art styles to which one fits within our story. Let's start. How about this one? We're just going to copy the code. I'm going to copy the original prompt for the character reference. Then copy paste the code. I'm going to generate two at a time so I have more choices. All right, so these are the results. Can't really say I like any of these, so I'm going to have to choose another one. This one looks better. Let's try this one. By the way, I made a mistake with the hairstyle here. This should be Messi Pompadour. Just going to correct that. Now we're going to generate it, and boom. I like this one better. Clean, crisp, vector art style. But I want something that's dark. <gasps> as befitting my type of story let's see okay this might be perfect let me try it out this looks well i actually really like it this works for my story i don't have time to go over the other art styles anyway so i'm just gonna make this quick i'm gonna choose this one upscale that as you can see he has a neutral facial expression now at this point, we're going to need to generate other facial expressions of our character reference. And the reason why is that it makes it so much easier for you to generate your character in different scenes later on. Throughout your story, your character is going to experience a multitude of emotions. And you need enough character references to be flexible. So we're going to copy the prompt exactly. Use the image in question as the character reference. And just describe the facial expression as vividly as you can. For this one, I'm just going to use one word to see if that works. It did work tremendously well, if I say so myself. Now let's try a different emotion. Angry this time. I'll try to be more descriptive to make sure that it comes out right. I think I like this one best, so I'll upscale it. Now, note that you can generate as many facial expressions as you need for your set of character references, but you don't need to do them all at once. And just for brevity's sake, I'm going to stick to just these two. 
Now let's try to generate some poses using these two as character references. Let's start with the smile reference. I'm going to copy paste the prompt. And remove most of the descriptors because CREF will take care of the consistency. Now I have more room to describe the pose. Not bad. This is something I could use. And the consistency is not far off. Now let's try the enraged reference. I'm going to make him point a gun. I'm also going to generate him in two different aspect ratios to see which one is more suitable. Well, they didn't really follow my prompt exactly, but I like the results. Though I wanted him to hold the gun with two hands, but this is a good enough compromise. I think I'm going to choose this one. This looks pretty badass, actually. Now it's time to talk about weights, particularly character weight and style weight. Weights allow you to influence the character and the style. Character weights have values from 0 to 100, while style weights have values from 0 to 1000. Now what this essentially means is that the higher the value of the weights, the higher the strength of the character or the style. By default, character weights is set to 100, while style weights is set to 100 as well. However, do note that style can go up to a thousand. So this means that the default values of style is only one tenth of its total strength. Just keep that in mind. When you find that a particular style doesn't seem to be strong enough, you can just crank up the values and it will likely show through the image. To change the default values for both style and character, all you have to do is add this at the end of the prompt. Both of these. This is what happens if you play around with the character weights. I'm using the same prompt as the cigar pose, and as you can see, the 50 value for character weight still retains its consistency. However, values of 10 and 0 are starting to deviate a bit. To test the style weights, I tested out the gun pose. The 1000 actually looks pretty good. The only problem is it also generated a full background, which I didn't ask for. 400 looks decent as well. The lowest value, however, appears to look more realistic than intended. Now you might ask, why do we need to change the weights for this character and style? And the reason is for, for character, if you lower down the values a little bit, it actually helps you to generate um, variations in facial expressions. Because some characters are harder. If their original character reference is like really aggressive or frowning, and it might be difficult for some type of characters to generate, let's say, a happy facial expression. But if you lower down the, the character weight, it will give you some flexibility to accomplish that goal. For style weight, I already mentioned it earlier, which is if the style is not strong enough because the default value is actually 100. And of course, we haven't forgotten about the backgrounds. Our scenes won't be complete without them. For better control over the composition and scenes, I recommend that you separate the generation of the characters and background because it's hard to control the outcome of the scene if you're generating both at the same time in one prompt. The key to generating great backgrounds is to be as descriptive as possible. Since I'm not very good with words, I sought the help of ChatGPT. I just showed it an image and asked it to describe. And it gave me something like this. It was too long for me, so I omitted some parts. I also removed any descriptions of the rain. And this is how it turned out. So I'm just going to add SREF and the code. And then I'm going to choose a landscape aspect ratio. Alright, not too bad. I'm not sure what I'm going to choose. Now I get asked a lot, how do I generate a consistent background when there is no background reference feature unlike characters? So the truth is that you just have to be descriptive with your words and accept some imperfections. But do let me know if you find this too challenging. I personally don't. Comment down below and perhaps I'll make a video focusing on this. Anyway, now that we have both characters and backgrounds ready, it's time to compose a panel. And we're gonna use Photoshop to create one panel, just for example purposes. I know many of you don't like using Photoshop, but you can use any other tool you want, as long as it allows you to lay out the different elements of a comic or graphic novel. I also have a Photoshop tutorial geared towards AI creators. You may watch that later in the course. Let's start with the background. Then I'm gonna add our character here. Now remember, this is the reason why I generate a white or plain background for characters. It makes removal so much easier. Just click select subject. 
and mask. Let's just try to position him right. That's perfect. Now we're going to do some light color grading. Believe me, this is easier than it looks. Boom. Looks awesome. And there you go. One good panel. All right. In the next video, I'll show you how to make your character perform any type of pose, no matter how seemingly difficult it is. Thank you so much for watching. You have a great day. Bye.